great to see you. Those who are here physically, as well as those who are joining us virtually, uh, it's good that we gather together. I just want to take a moment as we begin to thank first and foremost our parish emergency response team and our facilities team for working so hard to bring us to this day when we can gather together around the table of the Lord on this, the feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Christ. I know that you've been fasting from the Eucharist for now three months. And uh, for those who are here today, you're going to be able to receive communion and what a blessing that is. You'll notice my sidekick is not here, Father David. As we begin to open the church and to work more together, his back went out. So he's, uh, he's in the rectory on the floor. Uh, coincidentally, how does that happen? Just as we're beginning to work. But I ask you to keep him in, his, in your prayers because he is in a lot of pain. And he's worked hard with the teams to bring us to this day and kind of it's a, a downer that you can't be here. So I'm sure he's joining us uh, virtually as well. So it's good that we're together at a time when we need to be together considering the situation in our world. And so let us begin with the sign of our victory, the power of the cross, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you come to us in word, in sacrament, and in one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you sustain us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you satisfy the hunger of every human heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take of the world have mercy on us you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand of the father have pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always ex and ex experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. 
Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord, your God, has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, 
I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. This is good news, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Servant of God, Walter Chizak, a Polish-American Jesuit priest who served as a missionary in the Soviet Union during the war-torn and tumultuous years of the mid-20th century, writes in his memoir, He Leadeth Me, of presiding at Eucharist as a prisoner, facing constant threat of reprisal for celebrating the sacraments alone and in community, the faithful in the camps waited until the noontime break to gather, observing the Eucharistic fast through the night and the morning hours. So they went all night and all morning uh, eating nothing in order to celebrate the Eucharist in secret with this priest. Chizak recalls in his own words, in small groups, the prisoners would shuffle into the assigned place, and there the pr priest would say mass in his working clothes, unwashed, disheveled, bundled up against the cold. We said mass in drafty storage shacks or huddled in mud and slush in the corner of a building site in the underground. The intensity of devotion of both priests and prisoners made up for everything. There were no altars, candles, bells, flowers, music, snow white linen, stained glass, or the warmth that even the simplest parish church could offer. Yet, he writes, in these primitive conditions, the Mass brought you closer to God than anyone might conceivably imagine. The realization of what was happening on the board or box or stone used in place of an altar penetrated deep into the soul. Chizak, who returned to the United States following his captivity, noted that no other inspiration could have deepened my faith more, could have given me spiritual courage in greater abundance than the privilege of saying Mass for those poorest and most deprived members of Christ the Good Shepherd's flock. Unfortunately, the reality of religious persecution experienced by Christians throughout the centuries, and even today, has been well documented. These stories remind us of the humbling power of the Mass, the Eucharist, which we finally, finally gather to celebrate today. Our fast from the Eucharist for these months reminds us that perhaps we have taken the Eucharist for granted. It's possible to get too comfortable. As we know, repetition leads to familiarity. The truth remains, however, that even today, the very act of gathering around the altar is an act of resistance, no matter how familiar the celebration of the Eucharist may be to us. It is a bold act in the midst of and on behalf of a community of believers. Why do I say that? An act of resistance. You see, the approach 
the table to we we approach this table from all sorts of different places different perspectives becoming one in sharing the body and blood of Christ we walk together toward the promise of new life setting aside the darkness of our differences and resentments friends in our divided and polarized world our act of unity here bears great witness and in our divided and polarized world as we have been fed by the real presence of Christ that real presence remains in us as we go out into the world to change it this is our mission there are lots of things I could say about the Eucharist, but in light of the injustices that we see in our world today, in light of our divided and polarized world, let us focus on two key words, unity and mission. Unity and mission. Unity. The Eucharist, among other things, calls us to unity to disregard the distinction between rich and poor, high class and low class, celebrity and ordinary, black and white, both around the altar itself and afterwards outside the church. It was this very thing that drew Dorothy Day to Christianity. She noticed that at the Eucharist, the rich and the poor, the black and the white, the young and the old, knelt side by side, all equal at that moment. Sadly, we don't take this unity dimension of the Eucharist seriously. I think there's a common tendency to think that the practice of just justice, uh, equality, uh, social justice, all of that is an optional part of being a Christian, something mandated by political correctness rather than by the Gospels. But we are wrong in this. In the Gospels, in the scriptures in general, the call to reach out to the marginalized and to help to create justice, unity, and equality is as non-negotiable as keeping the commandments and going to church. Indeed, striving for justice, equality, and unity must be part of all authentic worship. This challenge is contained in the Eucharist itself. This altar calls us to unity, justice, equality, and tasks us with building those realities in the world outside of here. Unity and mission. Moreover, St. Paul warns us strongly that when we gather for the Eucharist, the rich should not receive preferential option, preferential treatment. Indeed, the Gospels invite us to the opposite direction. When you hold any banquet, Jesus tells us, we should give preferential treatment to the poor. And this is especially true for the Eucharist. The poor should be welcomed in a special way. Why? Because, among other things, the Eucharist commemorates Jesus' poverty, his brokenness, his body being broken, and his blood being poured out. The Eucharist offers up the tears and blood of the poor and invites us to help alleviate the conditions that produce tears and blood. And we do that, as a famous church hymn says, by moving from worship into service. Called from worship into service, forth in your great name we go, to the child, the youth, the aged, love in living deeds to show, hope and health, good will and comfort, Counsel, aid, and peace we give, that your children, Lord, in freedom, may your mercy know and live. 
that's your gift for coming back to church. You know? <laughs> the point being, the Eucharist is not a private devotional prayer, but is rather a communal act of worship, which calls us to go forth and to live out in the world what we celebrate inside a church. We, re we receive the real presence here so that we can be the real presence out there. I'm reminded of a situation when I, I took a middle school catechism class uh, and gave them a guided tour of the, this church. And I identified and explained the altar furnishings, the stained glass, the statues, the vestments, the sacred vessels. I then called on each student to say, from all that they had seen, what made the deepest impression on them? And young, one young kid, let's call him David, uh, had a, a bit of a reputation as being a wise guy, so I called on him. I said, what, what impressed you the most? And he says, I was impressed by the, the exit sign. The exit sign. Now, thinking he was being a wisecracker, I asked him to explain that. Well, the boy said, it seems to me that it's only when we pass under the exit sign that we finally see what we did inside actually made any difference. He's right. Wisdom from the mouth of a child. The Eucharist is unity and mission. Unity says we're all connected. Mission says we are sent to serve. In a very real sense, the Mass just begins when we leave here underneath that exit sign. Friends, in our divided and polarized world, our act of unity bears witness. And in our divided and polarized world, as we have been fed by the real presence of Christ, that real presence remains in us as we go out into the world to change it. This is our mission. Together, let us proudly profess our faith as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our God feeds us with the finest wheat, nourishing body and soul. In gratitude and faith, let us now bring our prayers before the throne of grace. For the Church, that we will live as a Eucharistic people, sacrificing and sharing ourselves as Christ does for us, so that all may have life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For Christian unity, that Christ's body and blood given for us may heal all the divisions within the Christian community and bind us together into one body in love and service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, may a spirit of justice, an end to the sin of racism, and the institutional support of equality and opportunity for all people unite us once again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all ministers of the Eucharist, especially those who serve the sick and the homebound, that they may grow in faith through their service and be signs of God's love and healing presence to others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are unable to share in this Eucharist at this time, that the word of God and the love of fellow Christians may bring them strength and support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our beloved dead, that our Fa Heavenly Father may welcome them home to the eternal banquet. We remember especially Tarina Valasiergo, Harold Bulin, William Di Gregorio, Dennis Sperano, Tina, Tina and Henry Ferrioli, and Kevin Alensowitz. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us take a few moments to add our own intentions in silence. Through the intercession of Our Lady, we place all our needs and concerns in the loving heart of Jesus as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray with me that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of His name. For our Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Church. 
Amen. <clears throat> Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Father, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray for the courage to do God's will in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Master Zenon, now let us glorify and glorify the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God.
You said the closing prayer was the same as the opening prayer. It's the closing prayer. So you mean Psalm 11? No, the prayer after communion. Oh, that's not the closing prayer. Yeah. The prayer after communion. Okay. Thank you.
never saw them, so I don't know, but that means she was broken. So she was just like, yeah, see, she's very telling. <laughs>